The weather's a bit grey and miserable today, but I was determined to come to these woods anyway to have a bit of an explore because they're quite new to me. And whilst I'm here, I thought I'd share some tips on woodland photography that I've picked up recently. My most viewed video on YouTube by a long way is actually my second video where I'm out exploring a patch of local woodland. And the thing is, since then, I've learned so much more about woodland photography. I'm still far from an expert, but I wanted to do these videos where I share my, uh, my tips and the things that I've picked up along the way. So if you haven't already, go and have a look at a woodland photography video that I made last autumn, uh, which focuses a bit more on composition, because today the tips that I'm going to cover are a little bit more, uh, more general and actually tips you could probably apply to all sorts of photography. So my first tip is actually one that I covered in a previous video, but it's quite a useful one, I think, but also takes some getting used to and a bit of practice. So I thought I'd cover it again now in a bit more detail. But it's when we're walking through a woodland or a forest looking for something to photograph, we might come across a scene that we think looks good and we take the camera out and we take a snap. We look at the back of the camera and we realize it hasn't really worked and then we'll move on. But the trick is to not move on, to stay with what it is that caught your eye in the first instance. Now you might not immediately realize what it is that did catch your eye. So if you stick around in that area and try and dissect that scene a little, pulling out the details of what it is that you like about it. Now it could be a particular type of tree that's there amongst the hundreds that stands out amongst the others, or it might be uh, uh, the way that the light is softly diffused through the canopy of trees or it might even be just the things you see on the forest floor and once you've established what that is then you can start to focus on that as the detail or as the feature or as the main subject of your image and build up a, a composition around it however like I said it does take a bit of practice to get used to it which leads me on to my next tip So most people find woodland photography challenging because by the very nature woodlands are very cluttered and it's very difficult to find something distinctive amongst everything when it looks the same. And that's what this next tip is all about really. Don't spend too much time trying to make an image when there isn't one there to be found. Now here for example, whilst it's actually a nice little patch of the woodland, there's lots of young birch trees here and it kind of looks quite interesting it's going to be very difficult to find something that stands out or is quite distinctive. And if I try and capture just one of these trees, the backdrop is just more trees and so it's not going to make it stand out. And I could spend ages trying to find this shot and ultimately just walk away frustrated. So the tip is don't try and find an image where there isn't one to be found. So my next tip is related to the first two in fact because it's all about looking for those details and if you are struggling to find out what it is then maybe try getting a little bit closer. So look for those finer details and the, the small things that summarise the scene that you've seen. Now this can be anything really, you can get really creative with it and a lot more abstract and you can include things like colours and shapes and textures. And that leads me on to my next tip, which is to include a story in your images. Now, every woodland has its own story to tell in one way or another, and it's filled with clues and signs which can help you tell that story too. So at some stage here, a storm or something came through and blew down this tree, and we know that it happened some time ago because there's a lot of moss growing underneath. And then we start to question why that happened and what, what effect it's had on the rest of the woodland around it. But woodlands offer so many other devices which help you tell its story as well. So think about little bridges that cross over streams that will lead you somewhere. And on the same vein, a path that will lead you into the woods. Where is it going to? Where are you going to end up if you follow that path? Now those are all the little motifs that woodlands have to offer us that we can include in our images, which make them more compelling and interesting. But 
my final tip and the one which might prove to actually be the most useful for you in fact is to just ditch the camera either leave it at home or don't take it out just go and have a walk in the woods and enjoy it and soak up the atmosphere and get a feeling for what it's like there then you might start to notice things that you weren't really looking for and you know what it's like that when you're trying really hard to look for something it's normally when you stop looking for it that it shows up the only thing is is if you're walking alone without a dog then you can sometimes get some funny looks off people when you get the uh, impression that they think you might have lost your mind but of course what those people don't know is that it was by doing things just like this that helped me to regain mine So things are actually beginning to look a lot brighter. But it kind of leads me on to what I mentioned earlier about my second ever YouTube video and how much I've learned since then. I was talking about woodland photography, but I think in actual fact, I've learned a whole lot more too. I've learned a lot more about myself and the direction that my YouTube channel is going. And back then in that video I mentioned how scattered I felt and how I didn't really know what to concentrate on or what I should be doing to achieve my goal of becoming some kind of professional photographer. But I think that looking back on that time I didn't exactly know what it was that I wanted to do or how I was going to do it. But since then I've got a much more clear vision of what it is that I want to achieve. And because of that, I've got a much better idea of what it is that I need to do. So if you've been following me on my journey so far, I hope you've been enjoying it and I hope you enjoy what's to come. So for now, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with anyone else that you think might get some use out of it and leave some comments below giving others your tips on woodland photography that I might have missed in this or any of my previous videos. And I'll see you in the next one.